This is a photo I took in real life, and this is the photo I recreated in Assetto Corsa Competizione. And in this video I'll be going over photography and how I took this photo in real life. I'll be going over Lightroom and how I edited this photo. Then I'll be going over Assetto Corsa Competizione and explain how I took this in-game screenshot. And lastly I'll be going over Photoshop and tell you guys how I edited this photo. So first of all let's talk about photography. I took this photo at the Spa Francochamps circuit. I took it at a bus stop chicane. You can enter the circuit from the hairpin and then walk past the start finish line and then you end up at the bus stop chicane. So this is the camera that I used. It is a Sony Alpha 6300 and with a 55 to 210 mm lens from Sony. As you can see at Spa there are a lot of places where there are holes in the fences so you can take good photos and videos. So what you want to do is track the car with your camera. So just follow the car with your camera. And also you want to make sure that your drive mode is set to the maximum possible. In my case it's called continuous shooting high plus. That way you can hold down the shutter button and your camera will basically go into burst mode. And it will take multiple consecutive photos. And this is the raw photo straight out of the camera. And these are the settings that I used. I chose a shutter speed of 1 over 400 to make sure that I freeze the background. Then I went with a minimum aperture. And I changed the ISO to 200 to get a bit more exposure and the focal length is basically the camera zoom. And now let's move on, on to Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom and this is the unedited raw photo. And the first thing I did I cropped it. And here is before the crop and here is after the crop. So first of all I gave it a vertical 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And then I angled it to be flat. Since we do not have a horizon line in this photo. Uh, you can just interpret it a bit in your own way. Uh, for me, what I wanted to do, I wanted to align the photo with the car. So here at Lightroom I just made some basic adjustments. I lowered the exposure a bit as I felt the photo was too overexposed. Uh, then I lowered the highlights a bit, boosted the shadows to bring more details in the shadows. Uh, I boosted the whites a bit and lowered the blacks. And then I gave a bit of the haze. I didn't do much of an editing on this photo, I wanted to keep it as natural as it was. Then I removed the chromatic aberrations and I enabled the profile corrections, which Lightroom automatically detects your lens and will apply the right correction. And what it does, it removes the distortions and the vignetting around the edges. As you can see, this is before and after. Then I had multiple masks here, so the first adjustment I made is a linear gradient to take down the exposure on the bottom side to push the focus of the photo more towards the middle and the top. The second mask is a subject mask and I just boosted some values here on the right side as you can see. Here's the before and here's the after. Before and after. Then the next thing I did was adding some exposure to this side of the car to match the light that comes from the sun before and after. The fourth mask is a linear gradient mask that comes from top right to replicate the light of the sun. What you can also do sometimes is move the temperature slider to the right to give a more warm color as it comes from the sun. But in this case I didn't find it necessary. And the last thing I did, I added some shadow. As you can see this is the before and after. Before and after. And this is the photo before any edit. And this is the photo after edit. And now let's go over Assetto Corsa Competizione and how I took this screenshot. So first of all, selecting the car, the McLaren 720S, and then the team is called Garage 59. And then I found this driver with this very interesting name. So with the Spa Francochamps circuit selected and this car, we can start a practice session. So first of all, I just had to drive to the bus stop chicane. Then I paused the game and I went into the replay menu. And in the replay menu, you can press F7 to enter free camera mode. And you can use your arrow keys to move around. And if you click and drag your left or your mouse click, you can move the camera around. And if you scroll up and down, you increase or decrease the movement speed of the camera. And then you can click the middle mouse button to open the camera menu. And now there are two ways to take a screenshot. You can press F8 for the ACC screenshot or F12 for the Steam screenshot. Be aware that if you take Steam screenshots, you need to close the camera menu first. Otherwise, it will appear in the screenshot. The difference is that ACC screenshots always freeze the background, whereas Steam screenshots they give motion blur to the background depending on the speed of the car. In this case we want the background to be frozen, so the best option is to go for the ACC screenshot using F8. However, I just want to add that in case you want to take Steam screenshots you can go to Steam and then settings, then you can go to in-game, 
and then you can choose your screenshot button but most importantly make sure to choose save as uncompressed copy so that way you get the best quality so back to ACC this is the screenshot that I took in game and now let's go to the next step which is Photoshop okay so here we are in Photoshop so the first thing I did was fixing this curve I just dragged it from the right more to the left and then I just added some adjustments to make the white line brighter just some white solid color adjustments and then I masked out only the white part and I blend this part of the curve better. To see the layer mask you just hold down Alt and you click on the layer mask and it is going to show you what you have selected with the layer mask. And then Alt and click on the layer mask again to exit from the layer mask view. The next thing I did I removed the car shadow from here as you can see. So the way I did this I just made a new layer and then using the clone stamp tool I just sampled some piece of the asphalt here and then I just painted over here. And then using a layer mask I just masked out the car, so that way it is not being affected by the clone stem tool. So as you can see this is without the layer mask, and this is with the layer mask. Then I created a merge layer of all the visible layers, and you can do that by holding down Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E. And then right click and convert to a smart object. Then I went up here to filter and camera raw filter. And this is the before and after. Before and after I just boosted the exposure of the photo a bit and I gave it a bit more contrast. And the advantage of using a smart filter is that you can always come back and change the values. However I did mask out a few areas such as these ones because they were already very much exposed so I didn't need to expose them again. As you can see this is without the layer mask and with the layer mask so that way they're not overly exposed. The next thing I did was fixing the bumper and as you can see the two stickers are actually reversed in the game compared to real life. So for this one what I simply did I used the marquee tool which you can select by pressing M or you can go up here. I made a selection of the number and then I selected the layer that has that information so in this case it's layer 5 which was the merge layer. It basically contains the pixels of the photo and then while having that layer selected what you can do is press down Control and J and it is going to duplicate that selection from that layer and now you and now you can press Ctrl and T and now you can move it around and then doing the same thing for the silver logo you go to the layer that contains that information mark it to select Ctrl and J and now you have the selection on a new layer and now Ctrl T and you can move it around there you go so then I added two adjustments to the number, a brightness and contrast, where I took down the brightness and I gave a bit of contrast. As you can see this is the before and this is the after. And then the next thing I did was using a hue and saturation slider, I pushed the magentas to the right. So I basically pushed the magentas towards red and I gave more saturation and I took down the lightness. And this is the before and after. Now these layers, as you can see those two arrows here, that means they are being clipped onto this layer right here, onto the number. And to unclip them, what you can do is go between the layers and holding down Alt, you're going to see this unclipping option and you can click it to unclip it. Now these two layers will affect the entire image. But in this case, I only wanted to affect the number, so I can hold down Alt, go between the layers and click here. And now it's only going to affect this layer. And the same thing here, click again, holding down Alt. Another way to clip a layer is to right click and then go to create clipping mask and it's going to clip to the bottom layer. Same thing here, right click, create clipping mask and now you're going to see that these two layers are basically clipped onto this one, onto the number. And then I have an exposure layer where I took down the exposure, all those very exposed areas. So as you can see in my layer mask, I'm only affecting those areas. So the next thing I did was fixing this top left curve. And the first thing I did was fixing this part of the curb, which in the original photo it is supposed to be red. And as you can see I just made this using the clone stamp tool. Then the next thing I did using a hue and saturation slider, I made those greens lighter. Uh, I simply used the master in this case because I already have a color selection here in the layer mask. To make a color selection, first of all select an actual layer, then go to select and you can go to color range. And then you can pick the certain colors that you want. And because I already have a color selection here, I don't need to select the color again here. Like the greens, for example, it's not necessary. The color selection is already being done here. And then I have this green color, which is being clipped. As you can see this arrow here, it is being clipped to this one. So it only affects that area before and after. 
and then I have a hue and saturation slider for this small piece of the green curve. Uh, in the layer mask I actually have the opposite selection of the previous one, so I'm basically affecting, as you can see, and as you can see if I go to the greens, I'm basically changing the greens of the photo, except this part of the greens. And there are no other greens in the photo, so the only greens that are being affected is this part. Before and after, I made it darker and I gave it more saturation. Then on the original photo you can see there is one white line here, and there is another white line here on the very top. In the game there is only one white line here. So what you can do is first of all select a layer that has the information. So in this case it is going to be layer 5. Uh, you can use the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. Then you can make a selection. You can also use the pen tool. And then Ctrl and J. And now you have that white line in a new layer. Then you can just move it to the top. And then what you want to do is double click on the layer itself on the right side and then it's going to show you the blending options. And if you move this slider to the right you're basically not going to show the darker pixels. So we only want to show the light pixels which make up the white line. We don't want to show the dark pixels which make up the asphalt. So just drag this to the right and if you hold down Alt you can split those two points to have a gradual transition between the visible pixels and the invisible pixels. Once you're satisfied you can click on OK and then using a layer mask, then having the layer mask selected and having the brush selected using B and with black as the foreground color you can just delete those areas here using the layer mask. Then I painted some shadow using a black brush, this is the before and this is the after and as you can see it affects too much of the car, so what I did I made a selection of the car, duplicated it onto a new layer and I moved it above the shadow. That way the shadow only affects the asphalt and some very bottom parts of the car. Then I made another merge layer by holding down Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E. Right click, convert to smart object. And then filter and camera raw filter. So the first thing I did, I took down the exposure to match the real life photo more. So this is the before and this is the after. And then I changed some colors in the color mixer. This is the before and this is the after. These are the settings. The biggest change you can see is on the car, on the blues, uh, and that's because of the luminous slider. I push the aquas and the blues to the right, so that way there is more exposure on those areas. The next layer was simply a solid color, which uh, I only painted onto this number. And if I open up the layer mask, holding down Alt and clicking on the layer mask, you can see I simply used the brush tool and I drew over the number. And that way it is only being applied to the number before and after. Then I made a selection of the car and I opened it in the camera raw filter. And I took down the exposure and increased the contrast. This is the before and after. And then the color mixer, this is the before and after. I pushed the blues towards cyan. I took down a bit of the saturation out of the blues. And then I heavily boosted the luminance in the aquas and the blues. Before and after. And then using layer mask I only selected those blue areas of the car. As you can see, if I don't have this layer mask on, it's going to affect a lot more. And with the layer mask, without the layer mask, and with the layer mask, before and after. Then to match the asphalt of the original photo, I made a curves adjustment and I boosted the exposure. And here in the layer mask you can see I'm only affecting those white areas here. So this is the before and this is after. And I did the opposite thing on the bottom side. Uh, I took down the curves in the curves adjustment and then here in the layer mask you can see I'm only affecting the bottom side. So this is the before and after. Then the next thing I did, I aligned the car and the curves, something I could have also done earlier. And the way I did that, first of all I enabled the original photo and I made a new layer and selecting the brush tool, you can select the color that stands out and then just zoom in and trace the curves as in this example. And then do the same for the car, you don't have to be very precise. And then the same for the top left curb. Once you have those lines in the new layer, you can turn off your original image. And now you have those lines on your screen. So lift them on and now you can use those lines to align your uh, game photo. So the method I use to align those elements, first of all turn off your outline. You can go up here and turn it off, otherwise it will appear in your merge layer. Then go back to your latest layer and do Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E to create a merge layer. And while having it selected you can simply do Ctrl and J to duplicate it. So now you should have three duplicate layers. And then you can go back up and enable the outline. 
and now you can name those layers car top left curb and the last one bottom right curb and you can turn those off for now first of all just focus on the car Control and T and just move it in position and now you can press enter on your keyboard to confirm now what you can do is turn off that car layer turn on the top left curb layer and try to align it you can also drag it to the right and if you want more precise control what you can do is right click and click on warp And now you can click this check mark or press enter on your keyboard. And now you can turn it off. And now turn on the last one, the bottom right curb layer. For more precise movement, you can use your arrow keys. Like I said, you don't need to be 100% precise, but if you want to be precise, you can use your arrow keys. And now you can start masking out your layers. You can use the default position as the base of the image. So let's say we select the bottom right curb, you can hold down ALT and click on the layer mask so that way it's going to make it black by default and now, and now selecting a white brush, you can press down X to toggle between the foreground and the background color. And if you hold down ALT and right click and you move left or right you can increase the size and if you move up and down you can increase the hardness of your brush. So make sure you have your brush selected and now just paint with white. I recommend to use a soft brush. Just paint with white and try to have a smooth transition so it's not noticeable. Same thing with the top left curve. Activate this layer, hold down Alt and create a layer mask. And just paint with white. In this instance you might want to continue with your lines. And then your car, the same thing. Alt and layer mask. As you can see, if I use a hard brush, you can definitely see the line here. So that's why it's important to use a soft brush. You can also turn down your flow if you want to have a smooth transition. And after that, you can turn off your outlines. Then I created a merge layer and using camera raw filter, I gave more texture and clarity before and after. Then the next thing I did was fixing this blue part of the rear side of the car. In the original photo, it's actually black. In the game, it's blue. So here I have a layer mask painted with the brush tool over that area. It is not a color selection, so therefore the color selection has to be done here in the blues and I took down the saturation and the lightness before and after. And then I enhanced the effect by using a black solid color. As you can see it has the same layer mask except those pixels here. To copy a layer mask you can hold down Alt and drag it up. And I was going to copy. And then what you can do is go with the brush black as the foreground color and just remove the white text here. Then I made a new merge layer and I moved that layer up so I can match the position of the top white line and I masked that area out before and after, before and after. Then one last adjustment I did using a curves layer, I went to the reds and in the red curves I dragged up the reds to make those dark points more reddish. This is the before and the after, before and the after. It definitely makes this dark part of the asphalt more reddish like it is on the original photo. And if you enjoyed this video then make sure to like and subscribe to see more.